Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Nice weather we're having. No, no, we're not. It feels too much like spring. That's crazy. I know. Minus 20, minus this. And then I know it's like, I didn't even need a jacket today. I know. You know and even yesterday, I took out Ted, there was a bit of rain. It's just, I don't know. Crazy. It is what it is. So. Well, listen, I was talking to a client yesterday. Yep. And um, we we always, you know, in this business, um, real estate agents have a terrible reputation, right? Um, yeah, for most do. I'm sorry like to the say. Ge- the general public is that. that, yeah, is that we're all like. 100%. Salespeople, we all bullshit. We all, yep. you know. Um, so I have listings right now where agents are calling, even though they're under contract, agents are calling them, which is against real estate council rules, right? You're not, you're not allowed to go to a client that is already signed with somebody else. They're not. And then even if the listing expires on the listing forms, it's saying choose to be contacted. No, but they're still doing it because this isn't being policed. And to that point, whether the, I'm going to run a scenario and no, this is real life in a sense, no matter what, I really believe a seller wants to sell their house, no matter what, even if we sit there and say, you know what, we see your property listed at 850, not a, not a million. Well, I'm not letting it go for anything less than a million. So let's try it. So nine times out of 10, a lot of people try that, right? They put it up. Of course, the end result, they're not successful. Then we get, Again, you still have that seller or sellers that still are hanging on to that dream that they want to sell their house. And then they get someone, agent goes, I want to show it because I have a buyer for it now. It gets them all excited. They sign a new contract. They list it. And the buyer, there's no there's no buyer. This yeah. is continuous. This is not just here. It's everywhere. And it happened to my colleague in, in Toronto. Same thing. They did that. It was a lower price. He had it for a while. Great relationship with them. What did they do? They listed it with him. Now, that agent that had a buyer for them didn't bring in a buyer. Other agents now have said, this guy's a scumbag. We're not even bringing people there. So the best advice to people is to ask questions if they have a buyer great show we'll pay you a commission we don't need a listing contract no exactly and oh. and i had it happen it's been happening for years i had it happen uh, twice by the same agents and barry it's a yep. team yep and um they both two of my listings they contacted and said they had a buyer and my client called me and it was it had um expired because she wanted to wait a month or two over christmas so sure. I said, okay, well, I'll tell you, just tell them to bring the buyer tomorrow yep. Yep. and we, you can do a deal with them then. I won't even charge anything. I'll back away because I yep. knew there was no buyer. Yeah, I know. I know. That's and the- he did it twice in a row and he was doing it to everybody in town, right? Like, and even the second time it happened, my client uh, called and said, a different client, Diane, I just got a note, a, a letter that um, on my door that this agent has a buyer for my property. And I said, Oh, is it this guy? And I gave the name. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. How did you know? Well, because he does it with everybody and it's bullshit Mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a buyer. Mm -hmm. And I guess, unfortunately the general population thinks we all lie, cheat and steal. Mm -hmm. And we don't. We don't. So how do we, so what kind of advice could we give to our viewers? Cause. Okay. Perfect example, my client last night. Property is still listed right now, today, right this minute. Somebody called him last week. He said he's been getting three to four calls a week from all different brokerages and all different agents. So the agents right now, like it's savage. It's it's dog eat dog out there. Mm -hmm. So they they're starving. So they're saying and doing anything to get the listing. So he told me, well, Diane, she guaranteed me that it would be sold so okay rule number one in real estate nobody can guarantee you anything no so if anybody is looking in you you in the eye and saying i guarantee this 
or I guarantee already, that price that you're going to get for it. No way. Red flag. No. Not red right. flag number one. Mm -hmm. This agent are also told him, and my listing's in Wasaga Beach, that she does all kinds of deals in Wasaga Beach. She knows me, knows that I don't really do a lot of deals there. I pulled up her history. She hasn't done one in the right. last year. Total right. lie. So, so a, a a a prospect or a client or a seller, sorry, they can just they should be asking these questions. Let's see your portfolio. Let's see your past sales. Let's pull them up on the real estate board yes. and be transparent and share that data. Yes. These are questions that they need to ask because to your point, it is a dog eat dog world out there. And there's a lot of agents that just have no ethics. They're everywhere. They're just They're everywhere. Everywhere. And and I got a call last week about someone on a contract. I said, you know what? I really can't come by because you're under contract till it expires today. Really can't have this discussion in a sense. Mm -hmm. You told me a couple of things, but you can call me back after the 31st and then we can have a discussion about it. I don't want to interfere with that relationship because they're under contract. So I technically can't and I back backed out till then. Well, no and back, right? yes. And I've actually had people call me that the listing expired and they wanted me to list. And I said, oh, you know, I'll, no problem. I called the, the agent that listed it before me. It was Craig Strong, which I can say. And I gave him the heads up. I said, you know, she called me. Um, I know she tried with you. And um, he said, yeah, thanks for letting me know. But I gave him a heads up that, you know, she called me. We're not going to turn down business if somebody calls you and asks you to help them out. No, no, but no. it is respectful to give somebody a heads up that, hey, so-and-so called me. I'm going to list the house. Um, I ended up not selling it because her price was too high with him and with me. And another agent in my office ended up getting the listing. She didn't give me a heads up, whatever. And she didn't sell it either. So, well, okay. So that's a the point then. So if that was me, I don't care what it is. I wouldn't take the listing because of that. I just wouldn't take listings that I can't sell because there's, they've gone through three real estate agents. You're done. Craig's done. And this new person is done. They don't, there's no, they're not going back to you guys. You're done. They're never referring you. They're going to badmouth you. You're going to put money involved in it, getting pictures, video, signs, et cetera, open house, you name it. You're further off ahead by saying, turning that business down. I don't do that. I'm sorry. I will not do that. I don't care if they got 20 million properties. I don't care. It's not the right thing to do because you get thrown out. <laughs> well, so and, and properly for the market. My motto is don't sell your house if you want an unrealistic price. This is not a market to do that. Well, don't. it's not. It's not, it's not. And you know, the other thing is if somebody's sitting there and telling you, um, I do this, you know, I'm this highly successful person. I do this many deals in this area, or even I do this, like I pulled the history on the agent. She did way less than I did last year. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, if you were going to go by numbers and volume, you would go with me anyway, but he never ever thought to question anything. And, they and I guarantee something. There's the hook there. So people should be watching for those hooks. I have a buyer. I'll guarantee that I'll sell your house. I'll guarantee this. That's that's where they get them. Because at the end of the day, no matter, again, I'm going to say it again. It doesn't matter about price. That seller wants to sell the house. And if someone could bullshit their way into the door and give them that little glimpse of hope, they're going to work with that person. They, and then, they are. And but and hang on one, one second. And we know this is happening. We know that it's happening. So for viewers that are, you know, have done that or you're thinking of, you know, finding someone else, don't sign a long listing contract. You don't know these people. You don't have a lot of history on them or relationships. So don't go sign a six month contract because they are going to try to do that. Then and then, you know, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to do a six month contract. And every 30 days, they're going to drop your price. <laughs> and drop your price and drop your price, right? They're going to take the listing at the higher price just to get it. And then they're going to keep making you drop and drop and drop and drop and drop. Because I mean, that's the goal is to sell the house. And I understand that. But sometimes depending on the market conditions and where your client's at, it's not the right time to drop the price. Like, you depending, know, some depending, but 
I don't know. I I, I'm, I got different views than you do on that. And, and I just don't, I don't know. If, 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 if a property is not priced for the marketplace and what the market is doing today, why, do, why go through the exercise? No, what? I'm not talking about the price. I'm talking about, okay. so I know I'm priced a little bit high. The market is dead right now. Okay. It is. So do I wait to drop it to February, March when I actually have buyers out there? Or do I, I drop it now when it's not going to make a fucking difference? Hold on. I don't know. I, I, I'm really, I just, I, I really believe to our viewers that proper, if, if an agent is being transparent with this information that is what's selling in the market and showing apples to apples, not apples to oranges and showing what the price should be in, in a professional, um, I think they should take that advice. And if they're not willing to take well, that- Well, no, listen, they should. And but if, if say, I have a listing right now, a different one, where we agree that there should be a price drop. She's not in a big rush though. And I've been debating over and over, like, why drop it now? It's not, there's no buyers out there and it's in the high price range. And if the market actually takes off in the spring, that's when I should be dropping it. Doing it now is going to do nothing, nothing. Depending on the property, depending on the property and the property price point and type, maybe, maybe not. But it's, in, it's over a million. It's yeah, over it's a million. And um, if you look at the sales in the neighborhood, one just sold there. We still, she goes, Diane, like we're not overpriced that much. Like maybe we're not overpriced at all. Like we just, there was just a sale last week. So like to make some giant move now, it didn't make sense. But my client, the other client where his phone's been ringing off the hook, one of the big teams in Barry has called him three times in this one month and it's listed with me. Yeah. Got a contract. Um, all of these people are going on the assumption that, okay, all everybody's been sitting here all winter. Nothing's moved. So this is the time to get in there and, and make, you know, make a move because everybody's trying to sell because nothing's happening. Well, now, things are happening. I'll disagree with you. I think things are happening. We're seeing things happen in the market. I'm seeing it. You're seeing it. Certain property types aren't. Yes, but I still think there's buyers out there and I'm seeing it in the market. So I, I think there's buyers out there, but more um, like a lot of the listings for this one agent that, that he's going to sign with now by the look of it. Um, all of her listings have been listed for way over 60 days and she just keeps dropping and dropping the price. So, you know, her listings aren't moving either. Like this isn't, this isn't an anomaly. Like a lot of listings have been sitting there for a long time. I don't disagree, but you know, and, and, and do you make a move? What, if, what if the market starts getting better in February and March? We don't know that. Maybe we, we anticipate. Okay. But okay. If, Perfect example. Right now, I have one in Aurelia. I tell, I, I suggest to her, okay, maybe we should go down to 650 or 625 or whatever, right? And in two months, when the, when the thing's supposed to close, the market, like she could have got 675. This is, this is all the money she's going to have for the rest of her life. She's renting after this. Mm -hmm. So do we just, do, do we just, uh, what's it called? Like, what's the word when you just like, we, do we just give it away now because it's a shitty market or do we wait? Well, I don't know. I think the market's okay right now. I think the market's picking up and I think it thinks in that individual's, you know, financial situation. But if the house is sitting and it's not selling, there's a reason why it's not selling, especially at that price point today. Well, we're getting a lot of showings right now and we're getting a lot of interest in the last two weeks. So one of them is saying that when their house sells, they're putting an offer on ours. So who knows? Like we're, we're getting some interest, but mm -hmm. my, my thing is, is that I'm not just all about, let's just get this fucking sale done. I'm trying to look after the seller. It's not just about getting the deal done sometimes and not every agent is like that. I don't disagree, but I'm going to go push back and say, if the property's not priced for whatever, if, the, if any property is not priced for the market, it's not selling. Bottom line, I don't care. It's just not going to sell. And, and so either you're the professional them or you, in telling them, why are we pricing this at this high? 
So well, what? I just oh, listen. I just oh, I just did all the comparables for her again yesterday on all the sales. She goes, Diana, we look like we're priced right on. And I said, I know. Like when you look at what's selling and what it, what they're selling for in her area, she's not high. Then you try it, and then if it doesn't come in a couple of weeks, then you know what you need to do. Sharpen the pencil. My point is, if you're honest with people and you look after them, I agree. And 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 and, and that okay. Let me talk that part. I, I agree 100. percent But honesty comes both ways. You know the way I am. I just. I just say what I need to say, and I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. If I think your price is good or I think your price is good, I'm going to tell you. If I think your price is unrealistic, I'm not your guy to sell your house. Here's why. You're going to fire me after three months. Our relationship is done. You're never going to refer me. My reputation is more important to me that I don't want to take your listing because of that. Done. Yeah. What else? Or I think if they, if they spun it, okay, Mark, can we try this price? Try it. But when are we going to change it? Because you're not going to get... You may be a decoy property for people to come and compare. It's 50 grand more than one sold or let's go look at anyway and see if the, we can see the 50 grand there. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Depends on the property, but I don't know. I'm very big on transparency and I'm very big on being upfront with people and telling them that this is what we should do, but I can back it up. If I can't back it up, then it's a different story. But listen, this is why people like you and I are not necessarily like there's a lot of agents not like us. They go in there, they bullshit, they lie. That's, that's the norm. I, I I agree. Well, and I told my client last night, because I was on the phone with him for like two hours. I said, you know what the problem is? He goes, Diane, I didn't even for one moment think she was lying to me. He goes, I've dealt with you for 10 years. You're you're always been honest, and I think of you as a friend. And you've never lied to me. He goes, so I never once for one second thought she was lying. Then he should have called you and says, you know, I need to, he shouldn't have signed on the dotted line. He hasn't then, signed yet. Then, then he's not worth her. Then he's not in a contract. Well, she's going to get pictures done Friday and signed. So we'll see what oh. happens. I said, you he need to ask out. the questions. Oh, he has a way out. I said, you need to ask the questions. You, you need to get her to back up everything she told you. Because yeah. he he did tell me, and I did tell him, you know, you can't just let people walk in. And unfortunately, I couldn't look you in the eye and totally lie to you. But there's a lot of people in this fucking world that can. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. I, I don't disagree. How many of them? How many agents do you know? And you can, you know them, too. There's some good agents. So let's talk yes. about some good agents for a sec. And I want to get off topic too much because, you know, let's spin it this way. What should what should our viewers think about before hiring? They don't need to call us. They can call anybody they want at the end of the day. But mm -hmm. you need someone that's going to, you know, be upfront and honest and have integrity, fiduciary duties, doing the right thing for the client. That's important. Having ethics, you know, being transparent, being communicative with what's going on, you know. A lot and of them ask the questions. And, and if they tell you that they, this is their area and they're a specialist in this area and, or like she actually dogged me and said, well, I know Diane doesn't know anything about this area. Well, she, neither does she for God's sake, but you see what I mean? Like yeah. ask the questions if you're choosing due to those reasons, because I'm a specialist in this area and in this town. Okay, well, can you give me a little bit of your history? What are the last sales? You know, how many sales did you do here last year? What are the addresses? Like, just can ask those questions, but they they can ask those questions for sure. At you least know. get some proof to what you're being told, because unfortunately, you know well as well as well as I do how many people go in, and and you've said it many times when you went on to listing appointments and you didn't get it. Look at the one in Innisfil. Great example. The property is not going to sell. I think he paid one million two hundred sixty-four thousand for it. I'm going, holy cow! I'm being honest. I don't think I, your highest that you're going to get is a million two seventy-five, and that was in the summer. And things changed and shifted rapidly after that a bit. But I can't guarantee you anything. You may get one point two. What did he do? He listed with a Toronto agent, and they listed at one point five. It sat for one hundred and thirty days. Long story short, 
they got 1.2. You lost all that valuable time. The market was shifting a lot last year. So he didn't like my answers, but he liked the answers that, oh, I can do this, 1.5. Right away, he doesn't have to show it. He doesn't have to show them what, what, what sold for 1.5. He just went in there and that got there. They grabbed that information right away that he can, we're going to list the 1.5 because I think I can get it for you. That agent didn't do, know anything about the marketplace. Well, I guess what? Sure. He didn't care. He didn't care. He, he got the, the listing. He got the listing. He got the guy to lower it and lower it until it sold. And he got his money and he bullshitted his way in the door. Yeah. Well, he did, and that's that's ninety percent of how it's how it's done, and it's wrong. But at the end of the day, that's that's the business that we're in. And, and, and the, yes, the biggest losers are, are are the consumers, the buyers, and sellers. They're the biggest losers of of of, of agents not doing what they say they're going to do or representing them in a bad way. We could talk about this. Any we have ten million stories for me and you to put together, you know. And well, that's yeah. why I think it's good it to is. get three or four people because you'll get. Get three um, or four people to interview, not just the first one. Get three or four people. And see what price it's they possible. come in at. They should. And, and who's the most transparent? Not going into the listing and saying, oh, we were hoping for 50 Yeah, that's doable. Looking around and don't back that up. Meanwhile, you're going, 850 I'm more thinking like seven, seven and a quarter. <laughs> but they just want the listing, right? They're going to say anything to get the listing because they're, they're say anything starving. To that's what people gravitate to is the highest point price point that the agent walks in the door with is going to get the deal. And that's the wrongest approach you can take. If that agent can back it up, say the 850 and sit down and bring, when I go to the listing, I bring my computer, show them, here's what's selling yeah. there, 50, whatever, back it up. But I'm going to tell you right now, that doesn't happen, right? But they'll walk in the door and say, it's 8, 850. Great. We're going to go with you because that's the price we're, that's Dang. what we wanted. Isn't this great? Right. And then everything fumbles down. Frustration for the seller. This and that and that. I went to a, to a, to a showing on the weekend in a new buyer. And it's, it was, what do you think of the price? I don't think it shows like a 680. If, you know, I, was, I like the floor plan. I give them check marks for that. You know, I like the area, another check mark. Um, bedroom sizes are good. I didn't like the basement, but... He would get his money if he would have put maybe 10K into it. I don't know. And long story short, it's sold, but I don't know the price yet. But, you know, we're seeing that still happening right now in January, but that may not continue. We don't know that. No, you don't. You don't know what's happening. And and that's why I'm saying, yeah. like, there's red flags. You know, if you interview three or four people and two or three people are at the same price and somebody's like way up here. Well, there, there's a red flag. I guarantee you I can sell it. There's another red flag. I have a buyer for this property. That always, that's the biggest one. Don't sign nothing, folks. Don't do that. Bring a buyer. Great. Call my old age and even though it's expired, call them. They'll set up an appointment. We'll pay a commission. Done. That's what you do. That's Don't exactly what them. you do. Don't sign and, a thing. And, and unfortunately, like, you know, when I talked to my client last night, the amount of stuff he was telling me and all the calls he's getting, like I've never had a listing in all these years um, because it was about to expire today. Mm -hmm. And he's on, you know, yellow pages. He's got a landline. So mm -hmm. that all they had to do is put his name in, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never had a listing get that many calls before it was expiring in my life. Well, it's a changed world. Right. Lots of people in this business, a lot of new people in this business, business that are starving in the business that don't have a track record, don't have a database to work with, lacking experience and definitely lacking professionalism because they're doing it the wrong way, but they're doing it. And, and Oh, there's getting... a lot. And Mark, I, I'm with you. There's a lot of good ones. Like we know a lot of good ones. There is. There's some great people up there that we work, work with. There is. There. But yeah. another red flag is if all of the good agents that we know all of them, would they have called my listing when it was still listed? No, they wouldn't have done that. They respect the rules. These are the rules. We don't interfere with that. You That's never... right. But So if you have somebody calling you while you're still listed, you already know that they, they're <laughs> they're a little bit shady. Most of them, yeah. So 
I think we gave the viewers quite a bit to think about during our conversation right now. And just don't just take in the information, but don't make decisions. Don't, you know, you can go back to your old listing age. If you have a relationship with that, that previous agent that, you know, that you have done business with, and they couldn't sell your house. There's a reason why I couldn't sell. Don't blame that agent. Blame you. Your fault because it's too pricey. This isn't the market for that. But go back and, and knock on in your door and, and have a conversation. You know what? What's it going to take to sell my house? I now realize after 150 days that we've had five showings and no offers. And you've told me from the get-go, what's it going to take to sell my house? Let's meet tomorrow. That's yeah. what they do, really. If if they don't have a good relationship with that agent, and there's, you know, and that happens too then cut ties and, and interview some people. That's what they should do. That's just my thing. Two. Interview a couple of people, have some conversations about it. Don't get all razzle dazzled about, oh, I'm going to get you this. Because if you if they can't back it up, if they can't be transparent with it, just that's not your agent. Just block, cancel that one. Just say, great, thanks for coming by. Take care and, and don't give another thought. Yeah, you know? and I mean, definitely, we're not pushing ourselves in this conversation whatsoever. I, I, no, I, I think people should interview three or four people and, and I've gone on listing appointments where somebody else was picked and I wasn't even upset because they're, they were a great agent. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody yeah. has different connections with people. Right. And hundred percent. we don't, you know, that's part of the business. It is. But, and then how the sellers can help with that is listen to you don't i yeah the pricing's important it always has been and that's never going to change unless it's a covid market then we could say oh yeah i'll get you 200 grand over let's just price it 699 because it's going to get nine or a million yeah anybody could say that but that was smart that market's not going to come back for a while so the pricing has to be proper and how do we prepare a home like the property we saw this weekend with my buyer walls were rough Fingerprints, house was dirty. Lots of work on the walls. Every window had had to be replaced. All the seals were gone. 680. All the windows were okay. He freshly painted, changed a couple things for light fixtures. He'd have a shot. Changed the, the when you walk downstairs, it was laminate and then goes right into ceramic for the rest. Big deterrent. Said, so, you know what? I told my, my buyer, you can do better. Let's not jump on this one. Yeah. Let's just wait. And he's with his friend. And she goes, I know you always want to jump. I know you do, but I don't think you should. Right. He shouldn't jump. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't be in fear of not finding that right property. If you're in that price range, we can find something better. We can. Okay, yeah. Mark, I want to stop you for one second. Did you push that just so you could get the deal? No. I didn't want to do that. It's not how many fixing. how many agents will because they want the deal and the money. Oh, well, I know. It's my motto's always been, you know, don't worry about the dollars. Like after the people, do the right things, dollars will come. You know what? It's funny that you say that because I had a mentor when I first started, and um actually Bill Kindu set me up and said, Oh, you should, you know, talk to this guy and blah blah. And the first thing he said to me is, Diane, if you you never worry about the money. If you worry about the money, if the people, the money takes care of itself. Yes, it always does. All right. But there's a lot of, you know, one hit wonders in a sense of just going after the, the hit, the next one, the next one, the next one. There's no relationships built. It's moved on. Great. We move to the next one, move to the next one. Well, they just push. I remember one when I when I worked at Century 21, there was an agent there where um Actually, they bought a property outside of town with a septic. And um, I knew the son of the people that bought with the agent that I knew. And he goes, they move in and they can't put a pool in at all because of where the septic and the what the bed was. Right. And that was one of their main things. They told the agent, we want a pool in the backyard. Oh, yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, right. Where's the, can, you, can you show me the septic drawings, please? <laughs> Yeah. Or, or do call the township. Hey, we want to put an in-ground pool in this property. Is it possible? Because they uh, bought this, they're pissed. They bought this property and now they can't do it. He never checked. Never checked nothing. Uh -huh. He just wanted to get the deal. 
Oh yeah, it's great. Everything's great. It's great now that now the now the seller now the buyers on on a property that they can't do what they want to do. Um, I think we've had enough. I think we've covered some good points, and I think it, we gave the viewers some information that. Well, hopefully, they, we helped them and gave them a little bit of what to watch out for. I think so. Yeah, I think it was good. If you uh, like our stuff, hit the like, subscribe, or drop a comment, or you can ask us a question in the comments. And we're Love both that. really good at, uh, I reply to all of mine. So do I. It's good. And I've had some dandy ones. There's been some great con. There's been some great comments and conversations going back and forth. So I think it's great. Okay. It is. Okay. Right See okay, you too. Bye-bye.